I felt like there was something wrong with me. I think that's the strongest feeling. I felt that it was me who was wrong and everything else was right. So me having a depression and not having the ability to go out in school and be with friends, that was something wrong with me and I was alone with it. Johannes Ustugo, a 30 years old man living in Wibo, has experienced depression when he was 15. One day, after starting in a new school, he packed his stuff and walked 10 kilometers home without telling anyone. I was hiding, I wasn't going with the roads, I was going through forests, I was walking over a river. Uh, just so people wouldn't see me and uh, people wouldn't force me to go back. At that point we knew that was something like wrong. It wasn't just me feeling a bit sad, but there was something more uh, digging deep into it. I couldn't say why I was unhappy. Uh, I was just unhappy. Johannes was unhappy. But how do you even determine things like happiness? To answer that question, the World Happiness Report uses the Cantrell Ladder. The Cantrell Ladder question basically asks you to imagine a ladder with 11 steps and uh, each step represents a quality of life from the highest step, which is 10, like which is the best possible life you could live, so most possible happiness, and zero, which is the worst possible life you can live. And then they ask the respondents to put themselves on this ladder, considering their life as a whole. Denmark secured a high average ranking of 7.4, making it the second happiest country in the world. But how do the Danes define happiness? For me, happiness is going out with my friends and being social. Seeing people smile, that really makes me happy. Sitting in the garden, seeing nature just grow around you in this uh, springtime. To go on the beach with some friends and uh, have fun. I will definitely say the food. <laughs> All kind of food. <laughs> Sometimes when talking about happy countries are misled a little bit and people get the idea that Denmark is, is, a, is a utopia, which is not the case. It, it is, on average, better when you talk about, when you consider happiness, but averages is just masking so much information. 20% of the Danish population will experience mental health problems during the course of one year. Johannes grew up in a healthy and supportive family. However, the good days of joining his family at dinner were sometimes too much for him. I was probably around 15. So this is a very typical picture of my parents really trying to keep me for dinner. I have spare ribs, I can see, and they have like a whole one and a half liter of Diet Coke, which gives a kind of picture of this was what it took to get me out of my room sometimes, uh, but it worked. But sometimes I would just, it would be too much even for me to have dinner with my parents and I would just order some pizza and a Coke and um, I would sit in my room. I had my ups and downs, um, but there was just too many downs. The overwhelming feelings of the young boy locked him up in a world of Warcraft. And then we had a dead zone uh, where I just was at home for maybe a year, where I was just sitting in my room, uh, playing computer, got overweight, and just the depression got even worse. Depression is one of the issues Denmark is facing, among other problems. There are different well-being problems, right? Mental disorders, stress, loneliness, and, and loneliness seems to be the, the, the burden that, that rises the most right now. One of the other struggles Johannes had to confront was overthinking. It was like a whirlpool of feelings, like there were so many things uh, I could think about sometimes when I just had to uh, clean my room. I have to first remove everything from the floor. I have some magazines there, or then I 
have to not read those magazines. Uh, what if the vacuum pump or the cleaner isn't working? Do I have to buy a new bag? Do I have to go down to the city? Or then I have to take a shower first. What if I meet somebody I know who will answer, where have I been? Why haven't I been to school? I had one really good friend, uh, one really good friend who was close by who uh, came knocking on my window sometimes and to see if I was okay. That was nice, uh, but back then I couldn't. It was just too much. The struggles are concerning and the roots of the problem remain unclear. The reason we don't have any um, idea about how to solve this and the reason I don't have any, all the answers right now to what's causing all of these problems, I believe is because loneliness and well-being and all of these problems are problems that we are first now starting to realize the importance of as a society. Like there's always been people who have advocated for this, right? But on a societal level, this is becoming important now. While mental health problems are rising, the use of antidepressants is decreasing. The side effects of suicide and self-harm might play a role in this. Benefits certainly outweigh the side effects because the worst outcome to that disease is suicide. So uh, that is why we need to treat these children and adolescents and help them because we know that after some time these uh, depressive symptoms like the self-harm or the suicide, suicidal thoughts will decrease. So that is, that is why it is so tricky and why it's so important to follow very carefully. Antidepressants might be difficult to deal with at times. In the case of the young boy, they paved the way for healing. Medication helped me uh, not having too many downs and lows in my life. Uh, it made me more stable. Um, it took some of my initiative, uh, but it also made sure that I didn't go down too deep uh, so I could start uh, with uh, some uh, therapy. Around 6% of the Danish population take antidepressants. But this percentage does not mean the country is not doing well. In Danish, we have this saying that it's elastic measured by meters, so you can draw it as far as you like. I think if you go to a country like Tanzania, they will probably say that there are no people here ha uh, getting antidepressants. Um, that doesn't mean that nobody needs them. So we got a very thorough description of the use and uh, people with psychiatric disorders. They don't have that in Tanzania or other countries that you could compare to, but that doesn't mean that we have a higher problem because actually maybe we are treating people better for their psychiatric disorders that we know everybody has, including in Tanzania. Other than antidepressant treatments, more attention has been provided for people suffering with mental health. Sin Ungdum is a national organization where everyone, regardless of their diagnosis, can join in a community. When I was young and I had some struggle with life, like just having, being part of a community like this, like having friends uh, I could talk with uh, and have like shared interest uh, with, as that, that would have made like a huge difference. Yeah, I could have skipped like maybe two years of my life being in a down period if I had like something like this uh, from the start. Johannes has been working at Sin Ungdum in Weibo for around seven years. They often use time playing board games to get to know each other. Aha! It's here. Like down below here. This is nice. So someone can write uh, down cake uh, just for a gag, but they can also write like um, uh, like having a family. Um, and then for that the person to feel like, hey, that volunteer actually thinks that my like life purpose is having a family. Uh, wow, can I have a family myself? Does that person really think that someone out there would love me that much and want, want to have babies and buy, buy a house? When we have new people who's coming here, they, um, they haven't been maybe part of a, like, uh, a group in a long time. 
and they feel like they have to perform. They have to put on like a mask and be the strongest of themselves. But once they've been here like a few times, they, they really get the feeling that they can take away the mask and just be themselves. It seems like the taboo that mental health has been is, is starting to loosen up a bit. And we think in child psychiatry, we think that's a really good thing because maybe um, we are more open, we talk more openly with parents and then often there might be a more help seeking and that's a good thing if you have problems that you cannot deal with yourself. If you, for instance, lose your job in, in an environment where it's normal to be unemployed, then it doesn't impact you as much as if you lose your job in an environment where everybody have a job and everybody have a great career. And I think that may play a role in Denmark to a larger extent than other places because there is a lot of success or there's a lot of a lot of people doing really well in Denmark and then being the one who doesn't make it and doesn't get a job after graduation or whatever that may be that may may take a greater toll on your well-being here than, than other places where it's it's tougher to get a job for instance right the kids are expected to go to school, have a lot of uh, free time activities. The parents are supposed to bring them, drive them. So I guess there's a lot of expectations of the, to the lives that we are living. And those might be a bit high and, and also reflect that, that more people are suffering from, from mental disorders. And we know the numbers of kids uh, suffering from mental disorders is rising as well. So we could, we should use these numbers to reflect on our lifestyle or our society. Before it was more open to talk about mental health issues, Johannes was also diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. He went to a school in Skive where he found relief. It was a place where they would acknowledge me, not only the teachers and the pedagogues, but also the students there. Uh, they knew how I felt because they, they were dealing with uh, some of the same difficulties in their lives. Um, so the fact that I got to a place where I felt met as me, and it just was the biggest game changer uh, in my life. Uh, and it was the main part of me being here and being happy. We got this dog uh, uh, when I was like living at home and not really going to school. And she really helped me like a lot and gave me some sort of comfort. Today, Johannes has healed and works as a pedagogue with children aged 10 to 18, which he sees as a community. You see, that one is biting me now. We sometimes do this with the kids, and they have to see who can put their hands there the longest. But normally, it, it, there's nothing to it. But it's a really nice experience for the kids just to try and, uh, and give them some courage to do some stuff they normally wouldn't do. It's important that the youth get help, as mental health issues can also have significant consequences on society. People that have mental health issues and well-being issues, they are more likely to become unemployed. They are more likely to not find a job again if they become unemployed. They're more likely to have a higher consumption of public health care. And they're more likely to be uh, less productive if they have a job. According to Mikael Birkia, the outcomes of mental health problems are significant. Is Denmark prepared for it? My main concern would be whether therapy is possible to get. Uh, because in child and adolescent psychiatry, where I work, we, we see more and more patients and, and the number of workers does not follow that. So I think those using child and adolescent mental health offers probably experience that there is less and less time for therapy treatment. It, it really pays off to, to invest in mental health for these uh, and, and help these people because for every dollar you invest in mental health, it's estimated that you get four dollars back. Denmark is still facing challenges, but for Johannes, things are looking bright. Uh, I really feel happy uh, most of my life. Um, and 
And with the background I came from, I'm sometimes just happy that I'm here uh, and that I'm like giving a chance to meet with other people 